Hey y'all, hi. So today I'm gonna to be testing some drugstore makeup that I find particularly intriguing. This is because I realized that I haven't reviewed makeup in a long time. I actually forgot to spend my channel's budget for review makeup for the past two months. I've been focused on other things. I'm making fashion videos. I'm making more conceptual videos. I kind of missed it. And so I decided to create some review content, but it's a Sephora sale right now. So I'm staying away from Sephora. So we went to Ulta. The first thing they did was to pick out some drugstore dupes for high-end products. And that's a separate video that I've already filmed. It should actually already be up on the channel. But as I was poking around the drugstore section of Ulta, I also noticed that there were several pieces of makeup that just intrigued me for one reason or another. So I collected a little group of those and that's what this video is going to be. If this is your first time to my channel and you like the video, I hope you'll subscribe. My name is Hannah. I make fashion and beauty videos, but I try not to promote over spending. Let's get into the meat of this video. So I'm starting with no makeup except for brows. Nothing brow related intrigued me at the drugstore, but I did decide to add the e.l.f. camo color corrector to this video because a lot of you have asked me to review this. This is a pretty recent launch from e.l.f., not like brand brand new, but one of the newer color correctors on the market. And you know me, I love a green color corrector and this is a really affordable option. I think it's like $4. e.l.f. often does things well. It doesn't look too pasty you know? I kind of have high hopes. Here's how the tube looks out of its cardboard packaging. Hmm. Promising, promising. I do have on a little bit of primer, uh, the EXA primer. So it's really green, which I actually quite like. It kind of reminds me of the level of green, level of intensity of the LA Girl one, which was really, really punchy, but just, it's like it cancels out the redness and that's all it does when it's mostly green and not a lot of other stuff mixed in. Looks like that might be what this is doing. Yeah, it's really pigmented. The green, I mean, the, there is a strong presence of green pigment. It's not just like fading away. So it's greener than the one from EXA. The one from EXA has kind of a gray neutral undertone. That's the one that I like because I have a very gray neutral quality to the tone of my skin. Actually, I have it right here. You can just see through the tube what a different tone it is. But I think that that will make this one from e.l.f. more skin tone versatile. It's a strong enough color. It's like a punchy enough green that I can imagine it working really, really well on a bunch of different skin tones to cancel redness. A little bit goes a long way. And in terms of the formula, it doesn't make much of itself. It's just doing its job and it's not doing anything else. It's not moisturizing. It's not creamy, but it's also not pilling, not making a problem. It feels just like green paint, like green pigment paint kind of. And you know, it worked. I'm going to add even a little more. Yeah, you can really see the difference there between like the red toned skin here and my much more neutral skin with the product on it. So a little bit goes a very long way. I think that it's easy to over do it actually, you could end up looking green, especially if you don't have olive toned skin, which I do. My skin can take a lot of green color corrector without me looking green because I'm actually a bit green. The rest of me is like, you know, you can see it right there. Basically a frog, a frog that's never seen the light of day. But you know, that might mean that it's an ideal version of this, especially drugstore version for someone with an olive undertone. And even if you don't have an olive undertone, you're just trying to cancel redness. You can still make it work. It's just, you only need a teeny teeny but it's very pigmented. The thing that it's not is skin carry. And I like a skin carry green color corrector. You know, I like to feel like it's kind of a hybrid skin care makeup product because it does go in that place in between skin care and makeup. It's like a priming product. This isn't delivering that. I think that's the thing that you're not getting because you're paying so little for it, but it is doing everything else. It's also, I'll say, not the most spreadable. I think that's the thing that I keep fussing with it and that I've been trying to like get at. It's not the most spreadable. It's not getting patchy or pilling or doing a weird layering thing or anything. Like I, I am able to spread it. It's just, it's very green where I first put it down and then it's taking like more work than other green color correctors take for me to get it to not look like a green paint 
swatch on my skin and just to change the color of my skin. And I think that that's why of the two drugstore green color correctors that I've tried over these two videos, this one and the one testing dupes, I think I prefer the one that's a dupe for the Makeup Forever Primer, the L'Oreal product that I tested in the other video, because it's more liquidy, it's more spreadable, it's very effective, but I feel like I'm having to work harder with this e.l.f. one to get the result that I was getting with just one really quick layer with the L'Oreal one. And the L'Oreal one, similar to this, doesn't really have skin carry qualities, doesn't really change the texture of the skin, doesn't really moisturize, although it does have niacinamide in it, so presumably it brightens over time. It's just both of them are quite green and quite purely about color correcting. So I'm getting the same result that I got when I tested that other product. It's just this one's a little bit fussier. It's also less than half the cost. I think the L'Oreal one is like 10 or $12. This is only four. So do with that what you will. The verdict on this is that it works. It's not absolutely everything. It didn't blow my socks off, but it's decent. Decent to say the least. And wow, the magic of green color corrector. It gets me every time. So once again, I don't have any drugstore complexion products. Complexion is a little bit of a tough one for me at drugstore because of my tone and undertone. So I, again, I'm going to use the Monica Blender Blender Cover. Love it so much. And a little bit of NARS Spot Concealer. My skin was so color corrected that, again, I didn't need to use very much blender cover. I used even less than I used the time when I used that L'Oreal Green Color Correcting Primer. That's really satisfying to me. <laughs> I love the result and I like that. I didn't have to use too much makeup and I like that I didn't have to put in too much effort. Let us move on to what is to me one of the most intriguing things in this video. This is a L'Oreal Voluminous Brown Balm Mascara. So I was looking for a brown mascara because I haven't had one in a really long time. I've been really appreciating more natural looking makeup lately. And on those days when I wear extremely light makeup, I mean, my lashes are so pale that I often just want to put something on them, even if I'm wearing almost no makeup. But most of my mascaras are quite dramatic. They're all black and they're all quite dramatic. And even if they weren't quite dramatic, just the fact that it's a black mascara, which isn't really natural to my coloring, makes it makeup-y. So I've been curious about brown mascaras out there. And this is not only brown, but it's I assume trying to give an even more natural look because of being a balm formula. I haven't, did I miss something? Like I haven't heard of balm mascara. Was this a thing? Was this like a boat that I missed? Was it a trend? I don't even know if this is a new release or how old this is or what. This is our first balm in mascara with only essential ingredients. Nice. For fuller, silkier, healthier looking lashes, iconic volume, ultimate care, no compromise. So it's saying it's a balm mascara, but that it lifts and volumizes still. It's like if it does everything that it's saying it's doing, it's my dream. Like I dreamed it up and then it came to life. Here's the packaging. And look at the before and after picture on there. I couldn't get it to focus on the before and after picture, but it does look like it's not not dramatic. You know what I mean? It's not saying that it's a supernatural lash, just that it's a balm formula. There's the packaging. There's the brush. It's a little spiky brush. The packaging looks like vintage to me. It looks like a mascara from the late 80s. I cannot wait to see what this is like. Okay, first impressions. It's brown, but it's dark brown. I think for me to get a really natural color of mascara, I'm gonna have to maybe go to K-Beauty and look for like a light brown mascara. Brown in the drugstore in America tends to be like black brown or blackened brown, you know what I mean? There is a lot of pigment on the brush, a lot of substance on the brush, and it gave me instant volume and presence, as you can see, like really built up in a fibrous way on my lashes. Way better than the L'Oreal Telescopic mascara that I tried in the other drugstore video recently. Way more effective than that, I vastly prefer this. It just feels a lot easier to work with and I'm getting better results right away. If I didn't know that it was supposed to be a balm mascara, I feel like I might not notice anything different. So I was sort of expecting it to feel somehow like silkier and lighter and feel a little bit more like I was just painting my lashes with sort of a coat of balm rather than applying a mascara. I do kind of feel like the formula is light on my lashes, but I think that that's probably just psychological. Like what would that even feel like? I think I might just be projecting because it's called balm mascara. But first impression, I would absolutely wear this again. Like I would pick this up. I'm going to. It's going to be the first thing that I reach for tomorrow because I do feel like it has a kind of elegant simplicity about it. It's giving me results very quickly. It's easy to use. I'm not having to fight with it. You know, 
It's basically what I want from a mascara these days. Okay, here on the other side, I applied it much more tentatively, like just trying to do what I described, like coat my lashes almost with a coat of paint. And I got a much wispier, much more natural, easier to wear lash. It also looks more brown rather than deep, almost black because there's not as much on it. I feel like that's what I would do on a day when I was wearing really, really light makeup. And I sort of see the silky balm-like quality that, that maybe they're talking about in the application. It's kind of too late for me to try it, but I bet that this is also one where if I like wiped the brush off with a tissue, it would give me a very natural, just like darkened lash. Okay, so on this side, initially, even after I had put on that very light layer, I got a much silkier, softer, more kind of combed through lash to begin with when I started building it. And on this side, it was like instant sort of textured volume. But I think now that that might have been just because it was the very first time I had pulled the wand out. So the wand came out of the tube kind of loaded with everything that had been clinging to it for the entire time that this was sitting on the shelf at the drugstore. Once it kind of got that out of its system, it sort of earned its name of like a balm on this side more. But I then went back and built it up even more on top of that to make this eye match this eye. So I ended up with a little bit more of a dramatic-y, mascara-y look. But that's kind of cool because it means that you can get that silky, balmy lash. But if you want to build for drama, you can build for drama, which is kind of great. I'm excited about this mascara. So I feel like all that remains about this is to learn whether it gets super crunchy and flaky or smudgy because that's the thing about the telescopic that I tested in the other video. I'll probably have pinned a comment about this. By the end of the day, it was crumbling off of my lashes in like these big chunks and one of them got into my eye. It was like really annoying. And I don't want to use it again because of that. Maybe because this is a balm, it stays soft like stays waxy, but if that's the case, then I feel like it's running the risk of being quite smudgy. So I will keep an eye on it as it wears throughout the day. I'll pin a comment about how it wore throughout the day. If it doesn't flake, crumble, or smudge, it could be a winner. We could be looking at a winner. All right, let's move on. A very intriguing piece of drugstore makeup that isn't new in the least. So this is something that has intrigued me for years and that I finally found a place for in the course of things in my reviews, you know? So this is the e.l.f. cream contour palette. You all know that one of my favorite blush products of all time, if not my favorite, is the e.l.f. active lip and cheek palette, which was limited edition and is totally discontinued now, and I don't think you can find it anywhere. But I learned through my love affair with that palette that I'm a big fan of the e.l.f. cream cheek formula. But usually, I don't like the putty. I don't like the e.l.f. putty stuff. I like the cream palettes. And, you know, for me with blushes, they're usually too bright, too pigmented, too saturated saturated, too middle of the road in terms of the tone, like too pure of tone, I like those muddy, mucky colors. And I've realized that if these were marketed as blush colors, which I feel like they could easily be, not this brightening, like this highlighting, that's like a, it's it's not sparkly, but it's like a matte white highlighter for sculpting. So not that. But these other three, I could totally see a blush range in which each one of those is a color. I mean, they would be sort of bronze leaning blushes, but that exists. So I have long one wondered if these are similar in formula to the e.l.f. Active Lip and Cheek. They feel right off the bat a little bit harder. Like the e.l.f. Active Lip and Cheek has these soft lip sticky pans that your finger just sinks into. These feel a little bit harder and therefore balmier. I wonder if I can break the surface. Well, so I broke the surface a little bit and now it's starting to get that like lip sticky richness. So I'm like pressing into the pan a little bit to work up some more goop. Mmm, it's so satisfying. So here's how the pans looked. I've just messed them around a little bit. Sorry, I didn't give you a close-up before I did that, but this is what makeup looks like, you know? Here's how the colors look on my fingers. Clearly, the light one is the one that is the most likely candidate for me, but I think this middle one also. And then this dark brown one, it may or may not work. It sort of depends on the color it buffs out to. It does look like it buffs out to kind of a warm tone, which might not be my favorite, rather than a rosy tone, I mean. Those are the two darker ones. 
ones. But let's try this light one as a blush, to be clear. I, I'm trying to use this. I'm intrigued by this palette because of the possibility that I might be able to wear these brown creams from e.l.f. as blush. I'm not out here with much of an interest in cream contour is what I'm trying to say. And isn't blush kind of a contour in its own way? Isn't it all contour, blontour, bronzing? It's all the same to me. I mean, it's not not a blush. I'm piling on kind of a lot to see if it starts to look like dirt because I feel like that's the risk you run when you're blushing with a uh, contour product. And I'm putting it on my eyelids too. Well, I don't feel like it looks like dirt. I gotta clean up around it. I don't feel like it looks like dirt, but it's not a super cool toned contour palette. You know, if anything, it looks a little orange, like it's running a little peach on me. One thing it is that's interesting is very matte. It doesn't have any of that like gloss that cream blushes often have, you know, even if they don't have any sparkle in them, which doesn't surprise me because a contour palette wouldn't. Dare I try one of the darker shades? Oh. Mm, yeah, that looks a little bit like dirt. That was the second darkest shade. What's interesting is there's this pale cream colored one. And I wonder what would happen if I like added that in. It's like a mix in that lightens the color. It's almost like a drugstore Salt New York palette with the shade adjuster <laughs> mixed in. Okay, here's how I feel at the moment. It's not untenable, right? It did what I was trying to do. It, it gave me a blush effect. I was able to get a blush effect with it, but I felt like I had to fuss with it. I had to work with it. It didn't apply itself or like make my cheeks look instantly beautiful. I had to fuss with it to keep it from being a little bit patchy or spotty. Not as though it lends itself to patchiness or runs patchy. It's just to get it to apply smoothly over the contours of like my cheek and eye area there. I felt like I had to work at it. I had to work harder than I like to work. I like a cream blush to be effortless because it's such a wonderful part of makeup, such a beautiful part and such an enjoyable part. And when I feel like a formula is causing me to have to like work with it in a certain way or else I'm like risking it looking bad, there's just too many good cream blushes out there for me to be dealing with that. But the thing that I don't know is I don't know if me feeling like I was kind of fighting with a formula I don't know if that's a result of the formula or if that's because I was trying to make these products do something that's not what they're designed to do because this is a cream contour palette and I'm using it as blush. So I don't know that much about cream contouring. I mean, I'm not that familiar with it. And it might be that these are perfectly designed to be cream contours. And then if I'd used them in that way, I would have been like, oh, the formula is fantastic. And it's just trying to make them be blushes. I felt like I was fighting with the formula a little bit. That could be the case. But it also could be the case that the formula is like a little bit stiff, a little bit difficult to get even, doesn't blend itself out, and that that would be true whether they were being used as blushes or cream contours or whatever. Needless to say, the main piece of information that I was after was, are these the same formula as the e.l.f. Active Lip and Cheek? And I don't think they are. They're less emollient. They certainly have less sort of blendability and gloss to them. They're harder to work with. It's just not. I was hoping that I would have like three beautiful brown e.l.f. Active Lip and Cheek blushes, but I don't. It's just a little bit something else. So I'm not wowed by it. I'm not in love with it. Not the best, most perfectly applied blush look ever, but it'll do. It'll do for today. Okay, the creme de la creme. And it's a little awkward, actually, because it's two lipsticks, so I just have to do them one after another. But I just couldn't. I couldn't leave one of them at the store. I'm so intrigued by both of them. First of all, L'Oreal Color Riche Lipstick in Le Beige. This might even have been a suggestion in the comments on that video about gone Grage. It's not grage enough to dupe Gone Grage. I actually don't even think it's cool toned enough to dupe a Royal Scandal, my favorite Gucci lipstick, but depending on how it applies, I feel like it could have something a little bit in common with like Merit Tiger or the old Raw Chocolate, that Maybelline lipstick I had for such a long time. Ooh, it's less orangey. It's less warm toned than I worried that it would be. It's got a little bit of like raisin in it almost. That is a very pretty color and it feels nice and smooth. But I think I need to try this one first. This is a Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick, such a good formula. And when I saw this color <laughs> in the display, I was just like, oh, I have to try that. <laughs> you already know. I was like, I have to put that on. It's not just pale, but it, it's sort of gray. You know what I mean? Like it has this 
this kind of gray pink thing going on. It's called Skyline Pink. Oh, it's really sheer, but actually I kind of like that these days. It's the pearl. It's a super lustrous pearl formula, which I've actually never tried. I've only ever tried the mattes. I'm going to put this on. Okay, I really want to love this. I can't tell right away if it's working or if it's not. I think on a lot of people, on most people, on the vast majority of people, this is nothing except that like Paris Hilton, early 2000s, almost white, frosted pink lip that's not too pink, right? It's that look exactly, that kind of vintage, at this point, vintage look. I feel like there's maybe a chance that on me, because the rest of me is so pale, it's not quite that, and it's actually maybe close to giving me that very, very, very nude lip look that I love so much, where your lips are basically the same color as the rest of your skin. I feel like it's just a question of how frosty it is, you know? It's on the edge of being too frosty, even for that, for me. Maybe blotted? <sighs> I mean, it, it would function for me basically as a lip balm because the super lustrous lipstick formula is really easy to apply, really nourishing. I've loved it ever since I first tried it years ago. Blotted like that, I feel like it's not running the risk of being frosty Paris Hilton lips, but rather just a very, very pale, slightly desaturated pink that is a good color for me, washes my lips out a little bit, you know, while also adding a little tinge of that pink. And I like it. It's hard for me to get my lips to look like this, to look this color. It sort of is that Chantecaille lip crystal vibes. This is like the drugstore dupe for that Chantecaille lip crystal. It doesn't have gold glitter in it though. I think that it's the gold shimmer in the Chantecaille one that keeps it from looking frosty. This is definitely a finer milled shine particle, you know, and it's also more on the gray silver side, so it's going a little frosty. But it's definitely the closest thing in my collection to this, that Chantecaille lip crystal, and I love that. Again, because it's hard for me to get my lips to look like this. What do you guys think? When you look at me, are you like, what is this 2001? Where are we in middle school? Or when you look at me, are you like, that's very flattering. Love it so much. You have to tell me. It also just feels good. I don't want to take it off, but I am going to take it off to put on the other one. Okay, here we go. L'Oreal Color Riche Lipstick in Les Beige. Okay, this is a great lipstick. This is a drugstore find. What looked quite brown and almost like could be like an orangey leaning brown in the tube has turned out to be actually something that I understand why they're calling it Le Beige because it's actually mauve undertone. It's like a brown mauve. And it's not a super pale color. If I were to build it up to full opacity, it would be vampy on me, which is nice because that makes it versatile for a lot of skin tones, I think. But the thing that makes it versatile in the direction of my paleness is that while the pigment is there, it's balmy. It's a little bit balmy. It's kind of like the Merit. It didn't apply straight out of the bullet as wetly as sort of slickly pigmented as I was expecting it to. It applied a little bit more chapsticky, which is that quality that I love in the Merit lipstick. I've never tried a L'Oreal Color Reach lipstick, as you can tell by the fact that I'm describing the formula with wonder. The smell, I could imagine being contentious. It's that smell that I somehow associate with diapers, not dirty diapers, but like baby powder or something. But I also feel like it's a little bit floral in an old school way. Like maybe it's a little bit adjacent to like the violet scent that's in the Gucci lipsticks. I don't love it, but I also respect it. <laughs> like there's, it's okay with me. I could see it not working for some people. This color is, it's way more wearable because of the formula than I expected it to be. And that's what I'm always saying about the Merit lipsticks. And also because of the formula, it was really easy to get a soft blurred lip line. It was really easy to apply. I'm impressed. And I just like the balance of tones and undertones. Like I like it better on me than Lisa Eldridge Velvet Sorcery. Even I think maybe better than Velvet Affair. I feel like it's sophisticated. I feel like the color is sophisticated. And the fact that it's grounded in mauve instead of in like red or orange, it's making it for me a very wearable brown. Wow, I wasn't expecting that at all. I wasn't expecting to be so favorably impressed by it. I was expecting what often happens to happen, which is that the color would look great in the tube and then on me it would look orange. But that is like the opposite of that is what happened. Wow. Okay, so some hits and misses. The e.l.f. green color corrector. I think it's a hit for e.l.f. I think it's a great drugstore option for green color corrector. I'll probably keep using my favorite, the one from EXA, because it has a slightly more skin nourishing, skin carry quality, whereas this one is just a bit bare bones. But for being that, it's very effective. Lori 
L'Oreal Voluminous Brown Balm <laughs> Mascara. I am still incredibly intrigued. I mean, time will tell how it wears throughout the day, how it washes, but if it doesn't cause me any trouble in those realms, it's like at the top of my list right now for the mascaras that I want to be wearing. It has a lot of promise. The e.l.f. palette, honestly, kind of a flop for me. And it might be partly just that I've like built it up in my head for so long that I had a long way to fall, right? To find out that it's not what I dreamed that it was. And to be fair, I'm trying to make something that's designed for one purpose do something else. So it was a little bit of a setup in that way too. But you know, the longer I wear it, it's not just the formula. I don't particularly like the color either. I don't really like how orange it went on me. I probably won't continue to use this. I might mess with it a couple more times just to make sure that I've really tested it thoroughly. But so far, I think this is the biggest disappointment. Revlon Super Lustrous Pearl Lipstick in the shade Skyline Pink. You tell me. I want lots of people to be like, you didn't look like Paris Hilton from the 90s so that I can continue to wear it with abandon and without feeling self-conscious about that. And, you know, maybe you guys will be like, you did look like Paris Hilton in the, in the 90s, but we're into it. Like, I guess that that would also be acceptable. This, though, the jury is still out. I want to want it. I still feel really intrigued by it. I will continue to test it. And L'Oreal Color Riche Lipstick in 106 Le Beige. Unexpected smash hit of the video. This feels, and I think looks, very high-end. Like, this feels like a dupe for a high-end lipstick. It reminds me of my favorite, the Merit. The color even reminds me of the sophistication of some of those really intriguing, sought-after brands that are currently kind of at the top of the top in makeup. Can't wait to wear this and wear it and wear it some more. A gem. And that is it. I'm pretty happy with the overall look, except that I wish, except my cheeks. I like, no, I really don't like, the longer I sit here, the more I'm like, I want to like foundation over them and use something else. I just really don't like how my cheek look came out, but the lips are kind of making up for it. How into that product I am is kind of making up for it. And what's the first impressions video without some hits and misses? You know what I mean? It wouldn't have been quite as satisfying if everything was perfect or everything continued to intrigue me. It was good to have at least one that I can scratch off the list. Gosh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. As you can probably tell, I want to do some more reviews, but I'm a little bit at sea right now. I think if there had been like a new Pat McGrath palette or even an interesting Natasha Denona palette out there or something that begged to be reviewed, I might have gone and bought that instead. But instead I was like, I'm just going to troll the drugstore. So if there's anything that you've been like dying for me to review, even if you've said it in the comments before, I might have just forgotten. Let me know. I'll see what I can do to follow up on that. I appreciate you all so much for watching, for making my day every day with your sweet comments, for being subscribed if you you are. Thank you so much. Don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.